Hey there, tea time with tea. It's gonna be kind of, I'm gonna try to keep it short. First, foremost, tampering with the post office. I know there's a lot of you out there who get, um, do business by mail, who get your medications delivered by mail. I get my medications delivered by mail. Even though I work in a hospital, I can pick up the phone, call them, say, hey, I'd like this, this, and this refilled. Uh, can you get it in the mail today? Cool. No problem. Usually get it within two to three days. Now, the luxury that I have is working in a hospital. There's interdepartmental mail. So I'm talking to some of the other ladies, and they're telling me that it's taking them now four days. See, if they put the order in Tuesday, they usually get it by Thursday. Well, the lady who did it last week got it delivered today. Okay? So that's Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, delivered today, Monday. So, see, knowing what was coming up, tomorrow what I'm going to do, and because I have this luxury, I'm going to call the pharmacy, I'll order my medications, only I'll say, don't put it in the mail. Send it into departmental mail. I've had it done before. I call by 930. They'll have it packed up, ready to go by 3. The next day, when mail is delivered to my office, it'll come in a big brown envelope. They'll drop it off at the front desk. The lady at the front desk will call me at my desk and say, Hey, your medication's up here. <coughs> done deal less than less than 48 hours there are a lot of you who order your medications and by cutting back on overtime and cutting back on how long they have to deliver mail basically extending it really that cuts into how you get your medication if you get it on time if your medication is changed, your doctor then has to go in and change it. The pharmacy that you use, if it's a mail order pharmacy, my goodness, so now it goes from the doctor to the mail order pharmacy to the post office, and we see if we can get it to you in a timely manner. Post office has been around since before the birth of this nation, before the ratification of our Constitution. And he's mucking about with it. And he's mucking about with it by allowing someone who has never managed to post office before, has no knowledge whatsoever, but he gave him a million dollars um, donation for his campaign. So here, here's the post office for you to play with. Friday night, he hired, he fired, sorry, three senior officials. The one with the least amount of experience had been there 12 years. Knows the system inside and out. Fired him. A couple of other directors, district managers, fired them. I'm sure he'll put a couple of his buddies. Maybe someone standing in the background of that three-ring circuits from Saturday. Back there applauding and cheering Trump on. We'll get a new job in the post office. Yeah. Maybe that, too, will be his new buddy, co-worker. Yeah. I'm just saying this because when election time comes, our military counts on the post office to deliver their ballots. So you're also mucking about with our military members' right to vote. See? One thing leads to another. He... <laughs> What was it he said? I may give my acceptance speech at the White House, or I may give it at Gettysburg. Seriously. The graveyard of our American soldiers. Mr. Burn Bone Spurs. Captain Bone Spurs. At Gettysburg. 
And what was the other comment he said? I think my face should be on Mount Rushmore. What for? What have you done? You've done nothing. This man is extremely delusional. He needs medication. And the Republican Party is going down by not stepping up and saying, look, we made a mistake. At this point, you may as well bring them back the, the no, bring them back as the know nothing party. I believe those were the wigs or the whips, the wigs. Yeah, just change the name. No, you are not the grand old party. You are now the old, old party with no respect, no, no self-respect, no honor. Here, the shame is, and you can't just say it's McConnell, because if those Republican senators in the Senate did not stand up and say, listen, we need to get those damn, ba those damn bills out here and start debating them. We need to start going through them. Then you're just as bad as McConnell. You're sitting there with your tail tucked between your legs because you're afraid of McConnell. You have to take that power back. And right now, no one in the Senate has the backbone to do it. They may have looked down their nose at McCain, but the man was willing to make some hard decisions. And that little lady stood up and said, he's a, he's a Muslim. And she said, he said, no ma'am. He's a hard-working father, husband, just like I am. The rest of you Republicans turn your back on him. He told the truth. He read the writing on the wall that I have to step up and I have to tell the truth. Right down to Lindsey Graham, lucky Lindsey, tucking tail and following Trump around the golf course. It's a shame. I used to be a Republican. It is embarrassing the state of the Republican Party right now. It needs a complete overhaul. Gut it and start again. You are not the party of Lincoln. For all the flaws of Reagan, you are not the party of Reagan. No. You're just little boys who anyone who gives you money you're willing to sit there and nod your head and keep your mouth closed. And I have not forgotten your trip for a minute in early July to Russia. Grassley, you're now talking about, well, we need to take a look, another look at that Hunter Biden situation. No, you don't. They released a report last fall. The Ukraine released the report. No, there was no tampering, no um, no no in no intimidation, no favors were done. They released their report. It's done. But now we're coming upon 60 days before the election and you want to try to throw crap and mud against the wall. No. No. Lindsey Graham, Gra Chuck Grassley, you need to lose your seat. We're not having the backbone to say, nope, we're not going down that road again. And the Ukraine has now publicly stated, we have nothing to do with United States politics and we are not getting tangled up in that mess. We released our report, full stop. So what they're saying is you can sit there and play with it if you want to. We are not getting involved in it and we are not gonna let you drag us into your politics. Because right now, France, Germany, and England are the three who are defending the Ukraine. Because we tried, because Trump tried to intimidate that man into saying something that wasn't true. So, what they did was, once we managed to get stepped out of it, we're going to turn to Macron, Merkel, and Johnson and have meetings with them. If Russia wants to have meetings with us, then one of these countries has to be there right there by our side because you're not playing games. You're not playing the intimidation game. And I respect that new president. He's a young man. He's finding his way along. But I refuse to allow the United States to muck about 
in our sovereignty. I respect him for that. And Venezuela, whether that whether that election was rigged or not, and I don't think it was. That president said we refuse to allow when when Trump said he'd send down people to you know look over the ballot count and all of this. He said no, you won't. No, we don't need you. We don't need your military. We don't need any of you down here in our country. We'll find our way. And our sanctions are what happens to be running those people out of Venezuela. It's the it's the situation that we are causing. But we are also turning our back on the people who are running from us. I'll try something again, maybe tomorrow. Anyway, this has been Tea Time with Tea. This has been my opinion. T-E-A, time with T-E-E. Ladies and gentlemen, the election is coming. Find out if you when early voting starts, get your ballot. Get your young people, your young nephews, cousins, nieces, anyone over the age of 18 with a valid driver's license and a, a verifiable address. Have them go down to the election poll. Sign up to be trained because we're older. COVID don't play with us. But they can work it. And then they can avoid coming to see auntie and grandma and grandpa for 15 to 16 days just to make sure they ain't got COVID, then they can come on and hug on their on their older relatives. And we can boast about how they did their civic duty. In your cities, states, counties, you need folding chairs. You need bottled water with coolers. You need someone to hustle up a mobile porta potty at every pole. And you need a couple strong young men. Because if 7 o'clock rolls around and there's 150 people standing there still trying to vote, you hold those doors open. You keep those lights on. You see to it, they are allowed to do their civic duty. Anyway. Have a great evening. Trust the tea, not the Kool-Aid. Bye-bye.